Hello, I'm Juanita Phillips in Sydney, Australia. I hope you're enjoying today's virtual event so far. For our next session, we're going to be crossing a few time zones to the United Kingdom, where Dr Finlay Sutton is standing by. First, though, let's go to the moderator of this session, Dr Jeff Cook in Sydney. Over to you, Jeff. Thank you, Juanita. So good morning to you all. It's my great pleasure today to introduce Dr Finlay Sutton, who is a prosthodontist based in Garstang in the United Kingdom, England. Dr. Sutton did his initial, finished his initial training in 1993 at Sheffield University, worked as a, in private practice for the next six years, and then went back for seven years more training in prosthodontics, during which he did a PhD on full denture occlusion. <clears throat> Today, he's going to present a lecture to us called A Patient-Focused Emphasis on Removable Prosthodontics. So it's over to Finlay. Thank you very much, Jeff. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, complete dentures for this um, uh, presentation. And um, I think complete dentures are really, really difficult, actually, because... Um, it's really the only branch of dentistry trying to attach something to nothing. Um, and I think that this little video here that I'm going to show you now is probably the most important part of this whole lecture. Um, this is a video of someone eating and um, chewing with a set of complete dentures. And I just want you to look at this really, really closely because you'll see that the dentures bounce up and down and shift around on their bases as the patient chews. Now, this patient has worn these teeth for over 30 years. It's a man and he's just adapted so well to these dentures. And it actually, it's, um, it really uh, shows how adaptable humans are to, you know, having to use prostheses. Um, not all of our patients can adapt so well to ill-fitting dentures, but that video basically demonstrates beautifully neuromuscular control. And, the, and also it shows that patients do have to play a part with this. Removable prosthodontics and complete dentures in particular are really difficult to do. Um, and also, you know, managing the patients is, is hard too. Um, and I found that over the years now, I've been qualified since 1993, and I still find some patients really difficult to deal with. And so over the past um, seven years, I've had a really important mentor in my life. And I think this for younger dentists that, you know, if you're sort of fairly newly qualified, maybe in the first five years of post-qualification, I think getting in touch with a clinical psychologist is really, really helpful. I found it tremendously helpful for me to talk with um, a clinical psychologist about um, my job and how um, difficult it is at times. It's been really, really helpful. And John, who's local here, he lives in Lancaster and I see him um, every other month it's brilliant to have a good chat with him about difficulties uh, related to work. And he is just, uh, he helped me with loads of things. And he said, you know, Finn, I think it would be a good idea to maybe meditate and um, make sure you're doing exercise, make sure you've got good friends, uh, friendship groups. But also the other really important thing was to have a, a good um, group of dentists, uh, peers that, are really supportive, uh, where we, you can actually be open and talk to um, like-minded colleagues about difficult patients and encounters that you may have. And this is my sort of peer support group, um, the Best of a Study Club, and we meet twice a year. We're based in Britain, and it's fantastic for us. So I'm going to talk clinical, though, from now on. So, and these are my complete denture visits um, for my patients. Um, 
And it's a really standard approach, really. So primary impressions, working imps, reg, try in, fit, and then reviews. But if you look closely at visit two here, I've got a primary registration, and that helps to produce something which is called a central bearing tracing, uh, which is a gothic arch tracing, which helps me to register the occlusion really, really accurately, which is, I think, dead important with these types of patients. So I'm going to move on now and just look at the lower. Now, I get this level of suction on 20% of my lower complete dentures. I'm going to take this out. So I get really good suction like that on 20%. 80%, I get very little suction at all. But I just want to show you how I actually achieve that if I can achieve it. Now, although I'm just getting 20% suction on my dentures, the method that I'm show, going to show you is brilliant at increasing stability and also the support of the dentures and stopping them from moving around during the patient function. And the secret to this is the impression making technique. I want to show you how we do this. So first of all, I do a lower primary impression using a special tray, which uh, is not, it's not a custom tray. This is a, uh, a stock tray that's been designed by uh, Dr. Abe, who's based in Japan. And it's brilliant. It's got little cutouts for the retromolar pads here. And this is how it looks in the mouth. Um, the, we've got a, little portion a section that just goes into the retromolar hyoid area and then we've got the um, retromolar pad exposed there and we record this uh, retromolar pad in its undisplaced position and i get a really big impression just like this here so we're recording the retromolar pad and all of the buccal labial sulcus and all of that lingual sulcus on there so in and this enables us to produce a great special tray but i just want to show you how this is done it's done it with a, a two-part alginate system so i use this it's a zermac material it's a alginate this is the base material which is tropicalgin and then We've got a neocolloid, which goes into a really big syringe, a 35 milliliter syringe. This is how we use it. So here I am in the surgery. We've got Claire, my dental nurse. We've got Mary in the chair waiting to have the impression done. And this is a video of us preparing. So we have two different alginates there. So Claire's mixing and that's going to go into the syringe. I talk to Mary, I say to Mary, have a swallow, make your mouth dry, please. And then Claire loads that syringe up. She puts that, and this is, that's like a runny material that goes into the syringe. And I load the tray, the stock tray, that one I've just shown you. And what I'm thinking about when I'm loading that tray is I want to put plenty on that retro milo hyoid area. And once I've filled the tray, I then run the tap with really cold water. Claire's getting that um, syringe ready. She's going to pop it on the side ready for me. And if you look at what I'm doing, I'm glazing the alginate impression, just shaping it up. So I'm getting plenty going into the retro hyoid area. So I come round to the patient, I kneel down, and then I'll show you what it looks like from the front. This is another video of this. So here I am, I've knelt down, and Claire's got these little retractors in just to pull the lip away. And I'm just going to get the alginate and squirt it into that retro mylar hyoid area and squirt it around the lingual sulcus all the way around, up and over the top, round into the labial sulcus all the way around. Because I'm wanting to record all of the full extension of the labial sulcus right off the retromolar pad 
and lingual sulcus, I rotate the base material in now over the top. I get the patient to lift up their tongue. I push it down over the anterior ridge first. Just let your tongue relax. And then I count to five. And whilst I'm counting to five, I say, relax your tongue. And then I push that down at the back and get the patient to gently grip the handle. It's got a nice flat handle on this. And then I massage the cheeks nice and firmly. And that produces a really superb impression like this. And because it, the alginate is quite free-flowing, free the squirt, squirtable stuff, the injectable stuff, it records the detail beautifully. So, and then what we do is I get the primary cast back from Rowan, my dental technician, and I draw on a, the uh, extension of where I want the special tray to go. Now, this is probably the most important part of this lecture. I'm going to talk about this particular slide here. This is, this describes exactly how to draw that special tray because the, to construct the special tray correctly helps us to, helps me to get great suction on the denture. Now, and in order to do that, it's a six step, um, um, eight, actually eight step technique. So if you just go to my website there at the resources page, if you go to my website there and click on the resources section, if you scroll down, you'll come to complete denture construction manual and it's all in there exactly how to do it so the custom tray is made to the outline to the to the outer edge of that line that's drawn on our primary cast there and it's got three stub handles on it lovely stub handles here so i can just pick that up with my uh, finger so i'm now going to just move forward to visit two for the lower working impression. We're going to get move forward. Now, what I do with that special tray is I adapt it with green stick. And I love working with green stick. I think um, I, as a prosthodontist, I think it's a great material for recording the functional width and depth of the sulcus. I love it. And so that's what I do first. And if you look here, I've got a Bunsen burner there. I've got the special tray. I've got Vaseline on my gloves. I've got warm water running into this um, water dish here, kidney dish. And in there, I've got some soft green stick. So here we go. This is how I use it. So I warm up the edge of the tray really hot in the Bunsen burner. I've got a little sausage of the green stick, which I stick on the side of the um, special tray there. Heating the side of the tray up helps the green stick to stick to it. The Vaseline stops the green stick from sticking to my gloves. It's brilliant. So I glue it on the side there. Love this. And this is the first stage of doing the impression here. It's just on the, I just place the green stick onto the buckle shelf. So that is now ready to go into the patient's mouth. I'll dip it back into the warm water so it softens those buckle edges. And then it goes to the mouth and I get the patient to perform a certain movement. And I'll show you that in a minute. I also, then I add green stick onto the lingual surfaces all the way around, apart from on the retromolar pad areas. And I put, a, it's like a thin earthworm, a really thin earthworm all the way around on that lingual surface on the outside of the tray. And then take that to the mouth and perform certain movements. And I'll show you what those movements are because they are the same movements I use when I put zinc oxide paste in there. So we mix, I mix up the zinc oxide paste, apply that to the fitting surface of the um, impression tray, and then take this to the mouth. And I perform these 
five different movements i'm just going to show you now and these five different movements are really important for producing a really stable lower denture essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to accommodate the denture so it 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 has minimal movement during the patient's everyday life so it doesn't move when the patient's laughing talking speaking chewing and sticking the tongue out doing all the things that we do as humans so here we go. I rotate the tray in. I gently push it down over the ridge firmly. And Claire takes away those retractors. And I then get the patient to go E and ooh. E, ooh, and then open wide and close. And then really lick the upper lip firmly. Really go for it like a windscreen wiper. Push against the lower front teeth with the tongue. And then a bit of water in the mouth. Have a good, powerful swallow. So it's five movements. E, oo, lick the lip. Push the tongue against the lower front teeth. And a powerful swallow. And it produces a lovely beautiful impression like this which is almost like a, a neutral zone impression so it's beautifully border molded and the edge there helps us to then here produce a beautifully waxed up denture um, and this so we get a, a nice impression like this and then rowan replicates that really skillfully in the final denture and if i've done my job properly it's not overextended it's just right and i don't need to do any trimming of the buccal or the lingual areas of the denture so that's the lower done that's really really important so let's move on to the upper now so to get great suction on the upper denture this is what i do so for the primary impression, it's two parts again. I have the um, squirtable neocolloid, and I squirt that up into the labial and buccal sulcus all the way around. And then I take the stock tray, which is an edentulous stock tray. This is a Shotlander product. It's great, beautifully designed for doing this. Shotlander tray is brilliant for, for that. I put it up at the back and rotate it up and over the ridge there. So I'm seating it at the back first, pushing it up and over the ridge secondly. And then I just gently coax the material up into the sulcus. It's really good. So I, these primary impressions are always massively overextended but that is fine because it helps us to produce a superb special tray of optimal ex extension so here is my special tray or custom tray and this is made two millimeters short of the depth of the sulcus taking into account any frenum at the back and also i want it to go slightly further beyond where the post dam of the denture is going to be, i.e. further back, maybe one millimetre back from the fovea palatini. So let's move now to visit two for the upper working impression. So I've got my special tray here. And the first thing that I do is I put green stick onto the fitting surface of the upper tray. It's because... This is going to be an alginate impression for the definitive working impression. And the special tray has been made on a model with wax on it as a wax spacer. This green stick acts as that wax spacer and reproduces that space. I try it in the mouth. I check it. If, and I look up here. This is in like the three to the six region uh, in the upper. If this flange touches the reflection of the sulcus there, I'll trim it back like that so it's nicely trimmed. So it gives me a nice space. If you look now, we've got space for the alginate and also the green stick to be border molded properly. So I move on now to doing the buccal aspects. I don't put green stick at all on the front. 
here. I keep that totally free, but I put an, a, a medium earthworm of green stick on the buckle edge here like that. I take that to the mouth and I trim it by pulling the cheek. I'll show you this in a minute. It's just the same when I put the alginate in. I then put plenty of adhesive on, alginate adhesive, and then I take that to the mouth. Once I've mixed my dense ply blueprint alginate X green, which is, I make that, I use, I glaze it with water and then we'll take that to the mouth just like this. So here we go. I rotate that in. That's great. Rotate that in. This is Eileen here having this done. Push that up firmly right onto my green stick stops. The patient's sitting up in the chair. I like doing my impression sitting up. It doesn't go down the throat. Let's have a look at Eileen from the front now. We just seat it fully up properly firmly and then what i do is i hold the tray in place and pull the cheeks i need to have dry hands to do this and make sure that they my gloves are nice and dry and free of alginate and free of um the vaseline i gently mold the front there to get the patient to waggle the jaw so the coronoid process is coming across and molding that and then I get them to do a really powerful suck of my finger. So that's the modiolus is contracting. Again, I'm just wanting that denture to stay super still during everyday function. If, I, if we have a look at that and lift the lips back, what I'm wanting to see is that the edge of the tray, the periphery of the tray, we've got a two millimeter border all the way around. It's been, and so that the, the patient's, um, and doing all of this muscle trimming and border molding, this has been beautifully replicated in the um, alginate. And we get a lovely impression like this, like that. And then Rowan replicates that in the final denture itself. I want to now move on to another part of the visit too, which is really important. I do a primary jaw registration at the working impression visit. And this is purely to set up the Gothic arch tracing. So it's an upper rim, conventional wax rim, lower pivots here. We've got two blocks, you could call it a Manchester block. Um, so I do this primary jaw edge. So I trim that up like that in the patient's mouth. So the patient is at the correct vertical dimension. And I assess the vertical by looking at the patients and if they look right, they are right. But this enables me to, and Rowan, to set up a Gothic arch tracing for the next visit, so for visit three. So at visit two here, this is a primary jaw edge. Once I've done that and I'm happy with the occlusal vertical dimension, I squirt in Futar D bite registration material like that. And Rowan, my dental technician, uses the, these primary, this primary reg. He trims off the buccal extension and fits it onto my working models, which we just made, and sets up the articulator here with that. And that enables him to then put this on, which is it's called a Gothic arch tracing or a central bearing apparatus, central bearing tracing system. And the, the, the system that I love using is a Gerber one. It's a Swiss system. It's brilliant. I'll show you how that works now. So let's move on to visit three. So when I at visit three, the jaw registration appointment, I do two things. I record the correct tooth position using these wax blocks and the ver vertical dimension. And I record the centric relation really accurately with this thing, which is a Gothic arch tracing system, which I love it's, it records the centric relation bang on, which is so important for complete dentures stability. So the first thing I do at visit three is to record the tooth position like that with these, with an upper rim and a lower pivot. This is how I go about it. So 
I've got a wax block in the patient like this. On the screen in the surgery here is a photograph of the patient with natural teeth. This is a, actually this patient at the age of 12. And Claire and I, at this point, we look at the patient and we, I keep taking that wax block out and trimming it. And I want to put the teeth back where they would be if they had their natural teeth. And the, those dentate pictures are essential with this, a patient sitting up there like that. The steps that I use for achieving that are, number one, I do the lip support first. And the way that I do that is I use a wax knife and I carve the rim on, on the working model there. I carve the, trim it away using a wax knife. I then look at the incisal plane and I want to get that generally. I want to get it parallel to the interpupillary line. And I trim that using a highly sophisticated wallpaper scraper, which I heat in the Bunsen burner and then put that onto the flat surface of the rim like that. And then thirdly, I trim the rim so that it is parallel to the ala tragus line. The tragus of the ear is just obscured by um, Anne's hair here, but I get it parallel with that. It's very, very important. Again, I'm using the wallpaper scraper to do this. And, um, and then I look at the buccal corridors and the center line to get that trimmed. And then finally, the vertical dimension. Trim that using these lower rims. And that helps me set up then the, the correct height for the Gothic arch tracing system. I put those wax blocks back onto the articulator, reset the pin, and then set the Gothic arch tracing system, that central bearing thing, at the same height as the OVD of the patient. And then I'm ready now to do the Gothic arch tracing, which is brilliant. This is ace. So this is what it looks like. We've got a plate at the top and a plate at the bottom with a screw on it. I put a wax. I actually um, use a China graph pencil on that plate there to put a mark on it. It goes into the patient's mouth and I get the patient to do some movements forwards and back, back, forwards and back and side to side. So that pin is the only point of contact in the patient's mouth there. And I get them to go all over the place. And it's fantastic like that. And what the patient does is quite remarkable. It produces this triangle here and the tip of the triangle is center relation. And I put a little plastic disc over that, back into the mouth, lock it in and then squirt my bite registration material in between. Superb, like that, and it locks it in place beautifully here. I then do a face bow transfer, and I use the carved wax rim on that, goes into the patient's mouth. This is the Danar system I use. You can use any system, it's absolutely fine. And that means that Rowan can then mount the working model using the face bow, and then the Gothic arch tracing systems used to mount the lower model. And there we, there we are. We've got the patient's head on the bench, ready to have the teeth set up. And this is what I really love doing. I love replicating, you know, the patient's smile. This is Anne here. And the teeth that we use, I use our Shotlander Enigma Life teeth, which are up at the superb products. And they're available in Australia through Ultimate Dental Supplies in Melbourne. And if you have a look at the virtual exhibition, you can find out about them there. Jim is the person to go to for these, and they're available. They are absolutely superb teeth. I've used them for years. They're fantastic. What I Moving forward, in, in, in order to make these look really realistic, I, I love making lower front teeth imbricated like this here. This is, um, in this patient there, that's a full lower denture, but it just doesn't look like a denture. It's great. 
So let's now move to visit four for the try-in. And I love doing try-in videos for this. But let's have a look at Derek here. This is He's got his old teeth. Now, what I see, oh, this is like a British standard denture with um, the teeth set on the ridge too far back with no lip support. But in order to show the teeth, the teeth are too low. And they look awful. Look at him here with these old dentures with no lip support at all. It just looks horrible. The upper teeth are on the ridge. It's not good. And this is him with the try-in we did for him instead with it. These are all in wax. We've taken the teeth further forward, but up. And what we do is we sit down. The, the patient has a good look at this. And they can actually look at the video after they've done the try-in at this appointment. And they sit with Claire, my dental nurse, looking at the video of themselves, looking at still photos, just to make sure they're totally happy with this end product before they get finished. Because I don't want the patient to go away and um, have the dentures fitted and then not like the look of them. So this video really, really helps. It's fantastic. But this is the... A comparison of Derek's teeth, his old teeth, where the teeth are set onto the ridge, and his new teeth, which are further forward but up and in the correct place where his natural teeth would have been. This is his old dentures with poor lip support and just improved lip support here with his new dentures too. So old and new and this is what i love doing is just transforming someone and making them look really good it's great here he is with a little bit of wear a little bit light i prefer to just darken them up a little bit and put a little bit of character in but some patients just want them to look light and white which is absolutely fine and even just from a little photo this photo here i've just blown up this photo of his natural teeth these are so useful in um, helping me. Anyway, let's move forward now to the um, when we come to process the dentures. Now, quite often patients will have like a redundant ridge or wobbly tissue like this. If you were to get my finger on that ridge there, I could wobble it. So if that's the case, what I do is I, and this is in Derek's mouth actually here, um, I draw onto the working model and then Rowan puts tin foil and it's, 0.4 millimeter thick and it just is a it's a spacer so it allows that wobbly redundant ridge just to sit inside the denture comfortably just like that so and also like with um with derek here he had some flabby tissue over the front there right on the this incisal propeller there and in those cases rowan just puts a little bit of tin foil over that too so we've got a nice little bit of space over there. So, and uh, if the patient though has a really flabby ridge like this here, I'll just slightly change my impression technique for the patient. You know, like this is um, Bert's here. Bert's been, his lower front teeth have been smashing that upper ridge there. What I'll do is I open the special tray here, so we've got a window in the special tray, and then I use zinc oxide just like this. Do all of my usual border molding, just as I've shown you before, waggling the jaw, pulling the cheeks, doing the suction technique, and this produces a an impression like this. And then I trim that away so it's nice and neat. Take that back to the mouth. And using silicone, just bead in beautifully, bead in some very light bodied silicone impression material. The patient's sitting up. I'm holding the tray in place really carefully. And then just fill in all these nooks and crannies on just on that wobbly ridge there. It's fantastic. So I'll go all the way around with that there and just let that set and it produces a lovely impression like this where the dangly bit just sits in there the flabby ridge and it stops this front section from being squidged up 
it allows it to relax like that. And this helps the denture stay in, in place better. And Rowan replicates that beautifully. Thank you very much indeed for listening to me today. I'm looking forward to speaking to you tomorrow. But what I really want to do with these series of lectures is to really make you think about the dentures differently and think that they, they are alternative and really useful alternative to dental implants. I mean, to think about maybe doing them differently, the dentures, maybe using a central bearing apparatus to help you. And I'd love you to join me tomorrow too when I talk about implant supported over dentures. And thank you very much. And I'm very happy to take uh, questions now. Thanks very much, Jeff. Thank you very much, Finlay. Absolutely fantastic presentation. Um, we don't, you must have talked so well, we don't have any questions. <coughs> However, <laughs> I've got some. <laughs> So first of all, when you issue issue the dentures, do you remount? Um, no, I don't actually. Um, I find that the because I've used the central bearing apparatus, the occlusion is really accurate. So um, I don't need to do. I, it's just very very little adjustment is not is needed on the occlusion. So so no, I don't. It's only if I've made a bit of a mess of the. Um, uh, you know, the recording the occlusion. And because I'm using the CBA, central bearing apparatus, I just I don't find it's really needed. Fair enough. Um, so you don't need so you, you don't need to do any adjustment of the occlusion in the mouth at all. Do you adjust in um, the mouth? Uh, in terms of adjustments, no, the, I think because we've got a um uh, the the dentures are constructed on hard models, then it's not the same as the patient's mouth, so it doesn't have the same give and uh, uh, squidginess, if you will. So, um, so wh when I fit the dentures, I make sure the dentures are really comfortable first. Um, so independently, the upper first and then the lower independently. Once they're comfortable, um, I'll then get the patient to close together, just to hinge together. And I say to them, which side do you touch first? You know, which side? Do you, and they say, um, hopefully what I'm wanting them to say to me is I just don't know. Um, I can't tell, but sometimes quite often they'll say, Oh, it's just this side first. And then what I do is I just mark up with articulating paper on the side that they're touching first. And then I'll take the denture out and I'll adjust the occlusion on that particular side and I think importantly, when I'm doing that, what I'm trying to think about is um, adjusting the fossa and not the cusp tip. So I want to preserve the height of the cusp. And if the contact, I want to deepen the fossa. And that just helps maintain balanced articulation in the mouth. Um, yeah, but, but, so you but do. Basic, sorry. But so basically. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff, go for it. So you, you, what, do you have a balanced occlusion when you set it up? And yes. How do, you, how do you set the condylar angle? Do you set the condylar angle, condylar angle on the articulator or what? Uh, no, I don't. I just leave it at 25 degrees, um, uh, Jeff, because do you know what? I, we, we do, Rowan sets it up with balanced articulation right. um, on the articulator, but do I ever get balanced articulation in the mouth? No. 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 Um, and But if I do want to get balanced articulation in the mouth, then, and, that it, and this is in circumstances, and we're now going into uh, minutiae, Jeff, in terms of um, it's very, very rare, but in some certain circumstances, if the patient has got super flat ridges and maybe a really unretentive upper because it's like pancake flat, then... What I do is I mix up carborundum metal filings with toothpaste and put it onto the occlusal surfaces and get the patient to brux it in themselves in the chair. And I keep, so they're basically milling it in themselves and producing that balanced articulation. So we have got some questions. What technique do you use 
for secondary impressions if the entire ridge is flabby. It, is that upper or lower? Uh, or both? I assume both. Probably both. Are. So exactly the same technique as I've just shown today. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you use Lucitone or any specific PMM metal pallets? Uh, yeah. So is that for metal reinforcement? Is that right? Is, oh, is well, it? I <laughs> I'm sorry. Lucid I don't know. That's just the question. Uh, Lucitone. Lucitone or any specific uh, PMM metal pallets. Uh, if, if you have a pallet, patient with a palatal and mandibular torus, yeah. are you using the same foil method for space re relief in the Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. So with, if we've got mandibular tori, um, then I make sure that Rowan puts some foil over that and relief over those tori so it's not resting heavily on them. Um, but actually, to be honest, what I find is that um, mandibular tori are not a major issue with um, complete dentures because they seem to get resorbed out of the situation. Um, I do find that they are part of the partial denture issue. Um, so uh, we do make, I make sure that we've got, uh, you know, 0.4 of a mil away from those. In terms of like metal pallets, I do reinforce the dentures regularly you know um what i find is that because the patients with this technique they can really chew well and over the years i've found that the they can just chew and eat really well with this doing dentures making them properly they do put more force on them and so what i don't want them to do is to crack the denture um so we often put a metal reinforcing plate in with an acrylic post dam on the upper to, so we can reline it and keep suction. And then in the lower, put a, a nice chrome plate in the back as well, just to keep them really strong because they're quite often very, very thin at the lower anterior region too. Um, would you comment on when you might and might not order up some pre-prosthetic surgery? Um, do you like know what? That's it's, again, it's a great question, and you know, in some circumstances, you've got these patients with really high frenal attachments, and um, you know, is it worth getting those frenum cut away? You know, as in just chopped out. I just haven't done it for you know doing the having the the, the referral practice for the past fourteen years. I've just not. I've not found it necessary to do that actually so so no is the answer to that um and uh you know i find that if patients have got like denture papillomas or like you know where you've got a flange and you get this overgrowth of tissue if i just do some like a reline it cuts away the, the overextended flange and maybe put some visco gel or a temporary soft liner in there it just gets rid of it and then i can then move forward to doing it so so no i don't do any sort of pre-prosthetic surgery at all would you use pvs or polyether as secondary impression materials um no i don't actually i know that dr arbe um advocates this and there's many prosthodontists advocate this worldwide um but i love the traditional green stick. I just love it. It's great for producing, you know, for border molding. And I, I really love working with alginate in the maxilla. It has a great flow property. Um, and it's also hydrophilic. Um, it loves moisture, whereas PVS is a sort of like hydrophobic and like, oh, I don't want to go there. Um, so, uh, and then in the lower... I love using the zinc oxide because it has a certain amount of body to it uh, to help get that lovely peripheral roll and that flow. But um, I think it's horses for courses. If you like PVS, use it. It's fine. Final question. Is there a, is there a reason for using alginate in the full upper and not SS white? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. There's a very good reason. And I've tried it. Um, 
when I was doing my master's program, we used to use um, zinc oxide for complete uppers. And what I found was that it was so, it's so firm that I just got to really push it to get it to flow up behind the tuberosities. Um, and quite often there'd be like voids. So it wasn't quite going round. Whereas with the alginate, because it's so runny and soft, it can just go up and go right around the back of the tuberosities, a bit like the really old fashioned plaster impressions, you know, that would run right the way to the back properly. So, um, so yeah, that's the reason why. Winter enough too. All right. Absolutely fantastic. Finlay. Enjoyed it more than somewhat as I'm sure did the rest of the audience. Just thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. Good luck tomorrow. Okay. Thanks very much, Jeff.